Good morning, everyone. So I'd like to first thank all the Girl Scouts for that wonderful song. Thank you. It was really, really nice. And today is Girl Scout Sunday. So first of all, I'd like to thank all of the Girl Scouts and all of their parents who work so hard for OCBC at so many events throughout the year, like our Hanamatsu Festival and Obon in the summertime. Uh, all ages of the Girl Scouts and their parents really put in a lot of time and effort to to help us, and we couldn't put off uh, some of these major events without their their help. Oh, okay. So, since today is Girl Scout Sunday, first we should all know that the founder of Girl Scouts is, of course, Juliet Gordon Lowe. Now, Juliet Lowe had a physical handicap. Do any of the Girl Scouts know what that physical handicap was? Anybody know what her physical handicap was? She had a physical handicap. Oh. She was, yes. As a... Was that one of the older Girl Scouts back there? <laughs> so as a child and a young adult, she had several ear injuries, and she was nearly totally deaf. But despite her handicap, she created the Girl Scouts of the USA. And it's continued for, what did they say, 107 years? 107 years. That's really, really amazing. And our Girl Scout program has been so strong here for the past 34 years, 34 years. Who's this person? Anybody recognize him? Beethoven. Beethoven. Beethoven also had the same handicap, didn't he? He was deaf. He went, he went deaf later in life. And amazingly, he composed his Ninth, ninth Symphony and he never even heard his own Ninth Symphony. Amazing to be able to compose such a tremendous symphony, but never was able to really hear it. Here's another very famous uh, handicapped person, Helen Keller, who was, of course, uh, deaf and blind, both deaf and blind. And she had an amazing, amazing life and maybe you've seen the classic movie, uh, The Miracle Worker, about the life of Helen Keller. Uh, but I want to talk about today one of the most amazing uh, Buddhist women in our tradition who is like the Helen Keller of Japan. And her name was Hisako Nakamura. And Hisako Nakamura lived the majority of her life from around age three due to frostbite that later developed into a gangrene, she lost her arms. She only had short stumps of arms. Then it went to her legs. Then she lost her legs. So she had short stumps for legs and short stumps for arms. So we see here in this picture, she's doing calligraphy. She's writing calligraphy with a brush held in her mouth. Uh, here she's sewing. She's sewing. She has a, a needle or thread in her mouth, and she's sewing uh, with, with the short stumps of her arms. So she was able to do almost anything in life amazingly. Here she's knitting. She's knitting. And here... Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but she's uh, uh, cooking. She's slicing vegetables. She has. She puts the knife in her armpit, and she's able to slice this way, even without any uh, arms or hands. She even figured out a way how to eat rice with hashi and a chawan. When she was a child, she had her parents put the food on a plate, and she had to eat it like a dog because she had no hands or no arms. And then other children would, would, would make fun of her 
So she was determined to learn how to eat like everyone else with chopsticks and a rice bowl. And this is later in her life. Uh, she raised a daughter. She was married, raised a daughter, and this is her daughter carrying her on her back. This is one of the beautiful calligraphy that she did with her mouth writing. And the, the characters say, our heart and mind itself is Buddha. Our heart and mind itself is Buddha. And here is a picture of her with a doll that she made. And when she was a young girl, she wanted to do things, learn how to do things like all other uh, young girls. She wanted to learn how to sew. She wanted to learn how to read. In those days, handicapped children did not have the privileges that we have today. Uh, she couldn't go to school. She had to stay at home. But she wanted to learn how to do these things. So her mother was very compassionate, but also very, what's the word? I think a little bit stern, a little bit harsh, tough on her. She knew that Hisaka would have to learn how to do things on her own. She would have to figure out how to do things on her own if she was ever going to, to make it in life. So Hisako, as a young girl, said, I want to learn how to sew. Would you teach me? And her mother says, yes, I'll teach you. So she put a needle and thread on the bed. And Hisako said, well, I don't have any hands or arms. I can't even thread the needle. And her mother said, you have to figure it out. I can't figure it out for you. You have to figure these things out yourself. So she worked and worked how to thread the needle. Finally, she figured out if she held the needle in the stumps of her arm and she put the thread in her mouth sticking out, she was able to push the thread through the eye of the needle that way. Major accomplishment. Learned how to thread a needle. Then she learned how to sew. And the first thing she made was, was a doll. I don't think it was this doll, but she made a little doll. And she told her mother, I want to give it to the little girl next door. Can you please give my doll to the girl next door? So Hisako's mother went to the neighbor, knocked on the door. I th she said, I think you know my daughter is handicapped, but she made made this doll for your daughter. Well, in order for Hisako to sew, she has to use her mouth. She has to hold the material and things like that in her mouth. So the material is kind of soiled because her saliva and what has gotten onto the material. The mother next door said, I can't give this filthy thing to my daughter. Threw it away. No, that kind of very sad tragedy happened to Hisako Nakamura throughout her life, time and time again, throughout her life. But she endured, she learned how to do many things on her own, and uh, be became this really amazing Shin Buddhist woman. So she writes in one of her books uh, this, my favorite friend was my wordless wordless doll. How I loved that doll sprawled on top of the chest of drawers. She wore a dress made of cloth with a red checkered pattern. Her hair was luxurious and her round pupils looked like bells. But what caused me the most envy were her hands, each with four fingers and a thumb, even if they were a little thin, and two feet. How lucky you are to have both hands and feet I would say to my doll, enviously, will you lend them to me? I wonder if people blessed with two hands and two feet have ever considered what it is like to be without even one hand or one foot. And I wonder how many people appreciate their four fingers and thumb and five toes by saying thank you to them. How many times I have thought about this. 
You know, I've never had any kind of physical handicap like that. Many years ago, I was playing Wednesday night basketball with the guys, and, and I, I broke my thumb. And I went to the doctor, and he said, oh, you got to put your thumb in a splint. So I had to wear my thumb in a splint. You know, even if you can't use your thumb, it was so difficult. Uh, the hardest thing was trying to zip up my pants without my thumb. <laughs> how, do you tie, how do you tie your shoes without your thumb? Without your thumb, you can't do a lot of things. And here, Hisako Nakamura learned how to live as a human being without any hands, without any feet, uh, and raised a child. So her life was so tragic, uh, I should have brought the book. We, we published a book on Hisako Nakamura, RBC, and so we have it in our uh, book sales. It's a really wonderful book. Anyone from junior high school age on up uh, can read this, this book, very easy to read. So it talks about her very difficult life. And throughout her life, she was, she, she was uh, tough, but she was also bitter about the kind of unfortunate life that she had to live. Why did I have to have all this misfortune? Why couldn't I have, have had hands and feet like everyone else? So she was quite bitter, quite angry uh, about her life. But later in life, she was, she was able to encounter uh, Buddhism. She was able to encounter Shin Buddhism. And she would go to temples and listen to Dharma talks. And the ministers would say, you know, it's very important that you meet a good teacher of the Dharma. You have to meet a Zenji Shiki, it's called in Japanese. So she thought, well, gee, who is my teacher? Who is my Zenji Shiki? Then it dawned on her. Her greatest teacher in her life was her physical body. She, instead of looking at her physical handicapped body as, as something that brought her great tragedy and sadness, she began to look at her handicapped body as her greatest teacher of life. Now her life was transformed. Now she was able to uh, receive the teachings, and her life became one of great gratitude and joy. And one of the highlights of her life was she was able to meet Helen Keller in person. She met Helen Keller in person. Helen Keller comes up with her hands to shake hands with Hisako Nakamura. But Helen Keller is, of course, blind. And then Helen Keller feels, oh, this woman doesn't have any arms. And then she feels further, oh, this woman doesn't have any legs either. Without saying a word, the two of them embraced. They each understood their lives. They each understood their hearts and minds. On the first meeting, without saying a single word, their hearts became one. And she writes about this in, in her book. So I just want to, in closing here, shared a few of, of her poems. Though without hands or feet, the life that is allowed to live, how precious. Because I am without hands and without feet, I am enveloped in the Buddha's compassionate sleeves. Sixty years without hands or feet, only because the Buddha's compassionate hands and feet have taken the place of mine. So this is the poems of Hisako Nakamura, really one of our most uh, amazing uh, Shin Buddhists. Uh, someday, I think more people in the world will know about this amazing woman and how she resolved her difficult life through encountering uh, the Jodo Shinshu teachings. Uh, Juliet Lowe was an amazing woman, starting Girl Scouts despite having a handicap. And so we who don't have any handicaps, who are normal, have our hands and feet and eyesight and hearing and all of that, you know, we can do a lot with our life. We can do a lot with our life. And we should be challenged to, to do something, to do something uh, with our life and make uh, some kind of, even a small contribution to our society and to our world. Thank you for listening today. Namandavats, 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 Namandavats.